Hi, so glad you could join me today for our Unfolding the Word study. We're in the midst of a study of the book of 1 Peter. I'm going to pick up our reading today in verses 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Now, as you've been with me over the last couple of days, and we were looking at the opening greeting in this particular epistle of 1 Peter, we were discovering that God was setting the stage for us to understand our lives as exiles, aliens, in the midst of this fallen world. All of us are aliens, sojourners, pilgrims. That's God's great intention. Our true homeland is heaven, his kingdom. We temporarily are in residence in various countries around the world. And God calls for us to love those countries, to pray for their leaders, and so forth. But understand, we are never really a part. We are a part, not a part, of, the, of these groups. We are not to conform to the world that God has placed us in, but rather live in keeping with the principles and, and guidelines of the kingdom of God. We are to live as aliens in the midst of the culture to which we've been placed. And yet at the same time, we are to be interacting with that culture, impacting on that culture, because God says, not only are you aliens, but you are also ambassadors, my spokesman to the culture. <laughs> and we talked about how God had put us in that place, how he had picked us out, how the Holy Spirit worked in our lives to convict us. And apart from that work of the Holy Spirit, none of us would turn to Christ. But as a product of the Holy Spirit's work, we had the opportunity to determine, will we, will we obey the gospel, repent and believe, or won't we? Now today, beginning in verse 3 and moving on through verse 5, we are turning attention to some of the benefits of being God's redeemed people, being his chosen ones, his picked out ones. In fact, a little grammar lesson here, in the original language, in the original Greek of 1 Peter, uh, verses 3 to 12 are actually all part of the same sentence in the Greek. <laughs> and therefore, all of the ideas in verses 3 to 12 are interrelated ones. But we're going to be looking at the first segment of those interrelated ideas in verses 3 to 5. And, and in verses 3 to 5, we are looking at some benefits of being God's people of being the chosen, the picked out ones of God. As verse 3 puts it, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. These benefits that we'll be looking at in verses 3 to 5 are intended to be reasons for us to be praising God. An attitude of praise just permeates these opening verses. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The reason we are praising him, or one of the reasons we are praising him, is because of the wondrous works that he has done, and particularly the wondrous works that he's done for us. When we review these things, the intended outcome from God's standpoint is that we would be praising him more. And so I hope that's what happens for you as we look at some of these wonderful benefits of being his chosen people that your response is going to be one just inevitably of wanting to bless the Lord. Oh, Lord, blessings to you. Thank you. Praise you for these things to be true. These benefits, by the way, that are supposed to produce that should be showing up in our music as Christians and the music that we share as a church. Uh, God's intention in, in music is not to somehow just emotively connect to us, but the content is intended to reveal to us the truths about God and his great grace to us and mercy to us. And that should then naturally stimulate praise and blessing going back to God. Notice 
all of the things we're going to be looking at are basically undeserved things. He said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy, not according to us, according to our value, according to our works, but no, according to his great mercy. So all the things we're going to look at are really things that come from the mercy of God toward us, not things we deserve or earn, but things that are given out of the very goodness of his heart and his mercy and grace for great benefits. All right, well, that's the backdrop. What are these benefits? Well, today, let's look at the first of them. He says, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. God's great mercy has given us new birth. Now, we've already seen in the opening verses of 1 Peter that we've been forgiven and accepted by God when we obey the gospel, when we respond to the conviction of the Holy Spirit properly. But verse 3 now builds on this wonderful promise of God and goes even further. Verse 3 says, we will now as a product have new life as well. What does that mean? That means that we are now different at the deepest level of our life. God has done something in response to our obedience to the gospel that has transformed who we essentially are. God has worked within to make us new, to help us to and cause us to be born again. He has given us new heart. We have changed at the very core of our being. We are not who we were prior to obeying the gospel. Oh, there's a continuity of sorts, of course, but we have become truly new. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. <laughs> that is really the truth. We have become new creations. Later on in this first chapter of 1 Peter, in verse 23, he says, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. In other words, even there, this idea of being born anew, born again. Jesus, when he was talking to Nicodemus, the Pharisee in John chapter 3, challenged the Pharisee, who was a religious leader of his day, and he said, listen, you must be born again, you must be born anew. All of us must be born anew, but that's not something we can do to ourselves. It's something God does to us, and he does it in response to our repentance and faith, to our obedience, to the convicting of the Holy Spirit about the gospel that we hear. We are changed. Those who are now aliens in this world, you and I, if we know Christ as Savior, are not merely people who've turned over a new leaf, who have established kind of a change of orientation of life. No, no. You and I are people who've received a new life. You and I are people who have been changed at the core of our being. That's one of the remarkable pictures of Christians that God lays out for us. We are not just people turning over new leaves. We are people who've been made new creations, born anew. We are different than we were. Continuity is there, yes, but we have become brand new people, born of the Spirit, not just born of the flesh. That's the wonderful privilege of the New Covenant era. The great response of God's mercy to us is that not only does he save us, but he transforms us. Not only are we forgiven, but we are made new creations. And God wants us to see that. And God wants us to understand that he's worked a miracle on our behalf. Well, we may not always feel like new creations, but God says, you are. You are. I have worked a miracle within you. I have given you new birth. When you decided to obey the gospel, one of the things I did in response to that is to make you a new creation. And when we reflect on the fact that God says you're not just religiously different, but you are new creations, 
It is meant to stir within us a praise and adoration of the Lord. We praise God and bless God because he in his great mercy has made us new creations. Is that what happens in you as you reflect on the fact that you have been born anew? I hope it is. The first of the four great benefits that God shows us here in this passage for those who have obeyed the gospel is that we are given new birth. Praise God. Praise God. Join me tomorrow as we continue to look at more of these wonderful benefits in verses 3 to 5. God bless.